Hi there, I'm gonna show you what I brought on my Camino. Um, I walked from uh, start of April till mid June, and uh, so that's quite a large uh, difference in temperatures in those months. Um, so I sort of have to adapt to that in my gear. I did a longer Camino, I did 1650 kilometers. And then uh, I think a lot of the gear lists I see here on the webs are made by people who haven't walked the Camino yet. So I think I, I would just share some of the things I took and some of the things I think uh, people should think about when they're picking their gear. I am a firm believer in that people should take uh, the absolute minimum when they do the Camino and try to get it as light as possible. I don't uh, support the idea of 10% um, of your body mass or whatever. I think everyone should just go for the lightest they can. So um, let's start down here. And this is my, my pack. It's a Gossamer Gear uh, Kumo. And it's uh, quite different from what you see most people wearing since this is a frameless bag. Um, and all it has for a frame is this um, foam pad here. And else it's just like a nylon sack. It has a very minimal hip belt because when you are uh, carrying the weight um, that I did or um, the weight this bag can support, you don't really require much more. And some even ditch the hip belt. You can see it's, it's detachable down here. Other than that, there's, um, there's uh, pockets up here for your phone or snacks, trash. I usually kept trash here and then headphones and phone over here. Um, and also snacks and stuff. Then there's water bottle hole holders. Uh, I kept my tracking poles and water bottles over here and other water bottles over here. Uh, there's this sort of um, string here that can sort of cinch the pack down. Uh, and you can also keep snacks in here behind the back panel uh, in front of the foam here. It just rests against your back and it's it's not as comfortable as not having anything there but um, it's it's fine you can keep your guidebook over here as well I did that and then it's it's easy to pull out from your back if you're a bit flexible with your arms uh, it has a little pocket up here you can't keep much up here so mostly small things uh, it becomes quite bulky if you put a lot of things on there uh, but in the main compartment there's 27 liters and then there's some extra stuff out here in, in the water bottle pockets But yeah, you can keep so much stuff out here um, I kept I keep my flip-flops out here as well as a lot of snacks and my hat when I'm not wearing it and you can actually um, The pack is made so you can wear the pack and then you can reach around with your arm and then go into the pack while you're wearing it so it's very easy to take out like uh, I had a roll of crackers in here that I could just easily go behind and then take them and eat while I'm walking so it's very much a pack for people who wanna uh, be have everything as accessible while they're walking and I put a little shell up here on this zipper here yeah so that's it it also has a ice axe loop but it's not very um, not very useful for the Camino. <laughs> you're, you're probably not gonna need an ice axe. Uh, to line the pack, I have the pack liner that Gossamer Gear sells. I think it's it's very nice. It's uh, it's less noisy than a trash bag, and it keeps everything dry inside. And that means I also don't have to carry a back cover, because uh, this pack is it's so thin that it it doesn't really soak up water. So there. And everything is dry in the dry bag, so there's no point in having a back cover. Uh, so that's the, that's the route I chose there. Then my trekking poles. Um, these stayed in my water bottle holders for a lot of the trip. I maybe used them 10%. But I was very um, fit uh, when I got there. I had I'd done a lot of training. Uh, so I think if I had done less training, they would have been more useful. Um, and uh, obviously uh, I started longer out than the Pyrenees and if I had started on the Pyrenees I would probably have uh, needed them a lot more uh, just because your knees would have been 
teared on by the Pyrenees <laughs> on the first day. So, yeah. Um, I'd still bring them. Also, if I got injured, they would be very good to help me. And stuff. These are the, the sea poles. Uh, Black Diamond Alpine. Uh, and this is the 2018 edition, I think. And they have... Um, I've put some reflective tapes on here. So when car lights or something shines on it... Um, there it reflects i have the rubber tips uh, the good quality because the the bad the the cheap ones they just wear through in hours so there's no point in using those um and they're very necessary because it's such an annoying sound click 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 yeah so definitely get rubber tips um i also like the cork handles uh, they sort of soak up your sweat so you don't get like Super sweaty uh, palms, and um, yeah, they sort of mold to your hands after a while. And the straps are very comfortable on those as well. But you can definitely get cheaper uh, and also lighter poles. Uh, but these are very sturdy and they're gonna last a long time for me, even though they're they're quite expensive. So probably not worth just buying for the Camino, but if you have some, definitely bring them. And there's lots of places where you can buy them down there, and they're pretty cheap. You can get them for like 10 euros a pole. So, and if you're flying in, that's a lot easier. Then there's my sleeping bag. It looks quite large, but it's actually very compressible because it's down. And um, it's uh, it's good down to about 10 degrees. As I said, I started in in the start of April, so it's um, by then it was very good to have in the um, the sheets, as they're called in in France, uh, because it's yeah you do get blankets, but it's not everywhere where it's super warm and stuff. And we we definitely had snow up in the mountains and so on. So I never slept outside, but if I did, this would definitely have been. Uh, very nice and even in the hostels I never got very warm in it until about when we got into June and by that point I, I used it as like a blanket quilt type thing just laying it on top of me uh, and I was fine with that um, if you're very scared about bed box and laying right on top of a the bed you might want to do a liner or if you're only walking in June just do a li only liner because you're not gonna need a big bag. But this was very, um, yeah, very nice. It's uh, from some cheap firm, but you can definitely get uh, some in China. That's also very nice. So do a bit of research on that. Extra clothes. I had the Under Armour uh, original synthetic something, and they they were pretty good. Uh, very stretchy and so on, uh, and no problems there with chafing or anything. Then my socks are the Darn Tufts, uh, cushioned, and they're, they're very nice. Um, this pair has done 800 kilometers now and there's no holes or anything in them. And um, yeah, they have a lifetime warranty on their socks. So if there's holes, you can send them in apparently. Um, but yeah, they, they will last me a long, long more time, yeah. so. They're very nice. And then um Marina Wall T shirt, which is my my only other shirt. <laughs> then my hiking stuff that I'll get to later. Um and it's very nice when you have sweat all day and you get you have a, a nice shower and then you put something on that's that's not synthetic and not quick dry and then wool is very nice uh for that. So I really like that. Uh, this is from some Danish brand, uh, Wolf Camber. Uh, you can get lots of others and also cheaper than this, so there's no point in buying this exact model, but um, definitely a Merino Wolf t-shirt is very nice for when you get done hiking, you can put this on. And it's it's quick to put on in the showers, as well as these, uh, this is just a regular pair of running shorts. When you're in the shower, you don't want something that's very hard to put on, like uh, tight pants or something, because you're in like a little compartment there, and you want something that's just fast to 
put on and, you, and then go out the compartment. So um, yeah, these are just regular running pants. Uh, they have uh, pockets, which is nice. That's definitely a feature to look for. And they also have like elastic in the band and a draw cord as well. So yeah, nice. They are from FC. And then I have these fleece uh, long johns, which was very nice in April uh, as an extra layer under my hiking pants. And when we got into June and I was at Osibero in Galicia, they were very nice to put under my shorts. So they were sort of, they acted as uh, my extra long pants, even though I only have these shorts as extra pants. And that worked fine, even though I was in some cold spots, but yeah, but it just means you can't wash your hiking long pants when you're in like very cold weather, which is, yeah, no one does that anyway, so. <laughs> And then everything goes into like a, an Osprey dry bag here and it molds very nice so it's it slides right into the backpack and lays on top of the sleeping bag which is very compressible so it doesn't uh, take up much volume. Then my flip flops they are like China eBay uh, one pound and they they're pretty good and light. I'll put all the weights uh, as you can see uh, in the video. Yeah, they you can buy those off of eBay and they're very light, but they do sort of soak up a bit of water, so uh, you do have to wait for them to dry out before you then can wear them around uh, town or something. Yeah, but uh, so that's my only extra pair of like shoes. Then uh, my stuff to wash clothes. I just uh, I'm a bit of a savage here, so I only use like a hotel soap. In like a Ziploc bag and then I just fill the bag with water, squish it around um, until it sort of foams up. Then I pour it into the bowl where I'm washing my clothes and then um, that works like pretty good but with hotel soap it's, it's hard to get the smell out. So maybe go for something like that's meant for laundry uh, but this definitely got me by uh, but I probably do something else. Uh, all the time. Uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, these are for wiping my glasses. I had a couple more, this is just one. This is uh, like Vaseline for feet and other chafing stuff. I don't really have chafing but it's it's good for a lot of stuff and uh, yeah I used about half of this so maybe I'll take a small up thing next time. And also it can be used for lip balm or any dry spot in your face or you can even do your hair with it or yeah, there's a lot of uses there. Uh, this is hand sanitizer. I took like a half a bottle or something. Deodorant, this is the one I took. It's not very small, you can get smaller than this, but this is the one I use at home, so I just brought that. Uh, this is uh, one I bought in Spain. I had a lot smaller one when I started, but I forgot that somewhere and then I I bought this. A bit big, but uh, yeah, some shampoo. I don't carry any um, body lotion or anything. Uh, lip balm, uh, ra razor, because I do shave, because I look horrible with my non-existent beard. And then I had sunscreen. I'm very... Um, I, I burn a lot, so you'll also see that with the clothes I'm wearing, it's it's um, it's to protect me from the sun and I thought a lot about how I should get through the very sunny parts and stuff, but yeah, definitely sunscreen. And normally I just wear it in the face because it takes too long to put on in the morning if you have to do arms and feet and stuff, so I just wear long sleeves and long trousers and then only in the face. Uh, I have a little bit of string, it weighs nothing, it's good for shoelaces, emergency shoelaces or anything like that. I have some pins, that's a 11, which is, that was a fine number. Uh, I had this S-hook, which I meant to use in the showers when there weren't anything to hang stuff. But that was never really the case, so it was, I didn't really need it. I think I used it once to like hang my raincoat. But that's about it. So I probably wouldn't bring this next time. It's, but again, it's two grams or something like that. So it's, yeah, 
and it's quite sturdy. You can hang a lot of stuff with this. Earplugs, I have a couple of sets. I never lost one, so maybe maybe it's a bit much, but they weigh nothing. I have an extra button for my shirt. Uh, I have a lighter. And underneath here I have needles for uh, blisters and stuff. And it's, uh, it's they're there because they don't poke holes in my dry bags or anything like that when they're there. So they're just taped to the side here. I have some thread, uh, band, bandages, uh, yeah, bandages. Uh, this is like some anti-diarrhea stomach uh, medicine, which is fine to have. A lot of, uh, a lot of people had this while I was there. Um, so it's nice to carry. I never had a, a problem, but yeah. This will get me by for like 24 hours before I have to, have to find a pharmacy to get some more. So I would definitely not carry a lot of this, but just so you can get to the next pharmacy. Uh, and there's pharmacies everywhere, so there's no point in carrying a lot of pills. These are Spanish ibuprofen. I didn't go through a lot of ibuprofen. I got a bit sick, so I, by then I took some, but um, yeah. I wouldn't take ibuprofen every day. There are people who do that on trail, but it's not very healthy for you. You can, you can there's all sorts of stuff with ibuprofen. So, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, there's sort of a way, way out there of, is it worth taking ibuprofen every day to keep going or should you take a rest? I'm more of the, the type that if you have to take this, then you can't feel if you're destroying your body even more. So, yeah. I, I wouldn't take this while walking, but maybe for like tension in your back or yeah, when you're sick and stuff. So it's good to have. Uh, alcohol swaps for blisters and other cuts. Then I have a bit of moleskin here, mostly for like uh, like a pad. And then I usually tape it up with uh, Luco tape. Um, which is a very nice tape. It's very sticky. It's it really, unless you get it wet, it stays on, and it's very nice for that. Um, I only had three blisters in 1650 kilometers, so if you know you're gonna have a lot more blisters, and you know that your boots or shoes aren't working for you, get new shoes, or take a lot more blister care, because <laughs> this is quite minimal, I guess. Um, Water bottles, I just had two of these. They're the lightest way to carry it and then every time you get like a soda You can just buy a new water bottle whenever they get nasty and stuff uh, and I started out with like a um, lot uh, taller and skinny bottles that's easy it goes inside the backpack and they had like a flip top Which was very nice because then you don't have to like physically unscrew them uh, every time so you can sort of do something else with the other hand hold your trekking poles or something like that so um, I can put a picture of the bottles that I um, I did use I also have my towel here and uh, yeah it was very nice a bit big uh, uh, yeah I can't really show you how it is now but yeah it's uh, definitely there's no point in like a towel that can um, cover you up I never had to do that so next time I'll just take like a small cloth that I can remove most of the water with and then dry off um, in the air. This all goes into like the Ziploc bags here and that goes all into this big Ziploc bag that then lays on top of my clothes bag. Then I wrap the towel around the Ziploc bag so it doesn't all these like doesn't poke me in the back since it's quite like a minimal um, Foam pad that that's a frame in my back. This is like my ditty bag. I have prescription sunglasses. I wear glasses, so they have to have some strength in them. Uh, cloth to clean my glasses and my sunglasses. A little. This is a lightweight uh, glasses case, and I also have one for my glasses. Whenever I'm sleeping in the hostel, I can keep this in my bed and then put my glasses in there, and they're easily accessible, and they don't break. Um, because that would be kind of horrible. I don't carry extra glasses because, yeah, I would still be pretty like comfortable without glasses and I can always wear my sunglasses whenever I have to see something. So there's no point in carrying extra glasses. I keep some extra Ziploc bags for like um, 
food and yeah snacks and stuff and all yeah keep things dry and yeah it's good to have some you can also cook in these do ramen in them and yeah a little notebook i never wrote a word in it so i'm not taking that next time if you're not someone who are really like expressing themselves in the written language there's no point because you're probably not gonna like do a journal this is like the rock for um Cruz de Ferro. This is, of course, not the one I took. I have left it there. A pen. Uh, it's nice to have a pen for dates in your credential or anything like that. Or just writing in general. And I put some, some gaffer tape around it here. And I, I have a lot. I had a lot more when I started. The, so, yeah, I have, a, I have a couple of meters there. Uh, and then this is like a reflective thing so cars can see you. And I never used it. So if you get up really early in the morning, put like a reflective thing on your back and then the cars will see you. It's probably not worth having something you have to physically put on and off. So probably won't take that next time. And that all goes into this little sill nylon bag that weighs nothing. Toilet paper, that's good for anything <laughs> of that sort. And that also goes into the bag. I have... Swiss Army knife, uh, knife, scissors, that sort of stuff. It also had like the corkscrew. I never used it. So next time they have a little small one they call the Victoria Knox Classic, also from the Swiss Army knife brand. And that has the scissors and the, um, the little tweezers here. Then there's, I did bring a spoon for like yogurts and stuff and I did, use it for that but next time i think i'll just take like a plastic one this one like a heavy duty plastic one that that won't snap this one will just bend uh, and that's pretty bulletproof and it probably weighs about the same this is like a c to summit alpha aluminum one this is electronics it goes into the dry bag electronics bag i do have a lot of bags and i could probably downsize some of them but then again, it's about organization and having everything accessible. The bag I have, it's just one big compartment. There's not really any pockets, so it, 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 there sort of has to be some organization somewhere. I have a OnePlus 3, and with that, it, it, there's a dash charge, which allows it to charge fast. So I do have to carry both of those. They're a little heavy compared to other charges, but it's worth it with the speed I get. Then I carry a little adapter here, which is USB, micro USB to USB-C. If I forgot this, um, I could still use this cable um, along with some other adapter for the power. And then uh, put this on it and then I could still charge my phone. Uh, because it's in most shops, um, at least it used to be the problem that you couldn't really buy the USB-C's in physical shops. You'd have to go on the webs. And also in like small villages and stuff today in Spain, you can't really find the USB-C even if you... Yeah. So it's good to have a little adapter. I carry that, carry that in my wallet. So it's not together with the other stuff. So also if my... Say my back gets stolen, I can still charge up my phone and stuff. Yeah. If I find a USB, micro USB cord. So I do carry a little one of those and I carry some headphones. The, I like these because they have like a pause and an up down. And then I carry a 10,000 milliamp battery. This brand is not particularly good, but yeah, it's fine. I, I like the, um, the power banks over like an extension cord or something because Many times um, it doesn't really solve the issue. So I like to, whenever there's fights for the outlets, I just plug into this and this can lay in my bed and I don't have to like physically move anywhere to charge my stuff. And this gives me two and a half free charges on my phone. So that's fine. And then I can usually find an outlet to charge this on my phone. And many times I would just, just um, charge up in the mornings because most people don't charge there and I can get like 60% in half an hour with this uh, dash charge so it's um so that's also a way to do it if you don't um, 
want to be in the battle of the uh, power outlets. Over here I have my raincoat which goes on top of the daily bag and the electronics bag. Um, and this is from Helly Hansen. It's it's quite heavy for what it is. You can definitely get lighter raincoats. But yeah, I'd definitely take a lighter one next time because it's quite heavy. I have a beanie and a buff and some arena wool gloves. Next time I'll probably take some fleece ones instead because I think you can get more warmth in fleece uh, for the same weight. This all goes into the pockets of the raincoat. So whenever you're cold, you're usually wearing your raincoat and then you can just grab those in your pockets. Instead of them being in like your clothes bag and then you have to dig through your entire bag to find them and you're not going to do that when you're on the go and yeah, you're walking and stuff. So you're not going to stop them. So it's, it's a good idea to have those in your pockets. Then I have my fleece. It's like a fleece hoodie jacket with like a proper zipper and it has like a hood and yeah, it's very nice. Um, but also very heavy for the warmth you get with it. But this was fine uh, in April where we had snow storm and everything. So this combined with the jacket and then uh, my other hiking stuff we'll get to was uh, warm enough in April. Yes. And then we move on to the worn clothes. Again, another pair of Dawn Tough socks, uh, the, another pair of Under Armour. So those would change out every day um, and wash one pair, wear another. My pants, they're the Columbia Silver Ridge, uh, which is very sun protective and stuff. And they are, of course, zip offs as well. And they have come with like a lightweight belt, which almost works you sort of have to tie a knot on it for it not to slip but yeah i do like these pants and a lot of people use them uh, on in on the camino and they sell them in a lot of the stores on the camino as well and they're like a very very thin like uh, very thin nylon like uh, yeah so these are, are good and they do make like a layer that's both good for sun and they also keep like a wind out and stuff uh, and those combined with my long johns there uh, they keep me very warm in april when we had like snowstorms and stuff in the mountains then i have my hiking shirt columbia silver ridge as well and uh, it's the regular version not the light version but uh, and it has this like long collar here that covers all the way up to like your hair so you don't get your neck burned and it also has like long sleeves that goes down to like knuckles and it uh, it has all sorts of vents so you don't like overheat and stuff so that's very nice highly recommend that then the hats i had this one is also from columbia and it's um it's not very stiff, so when it rains, this sort of goes down into your face. It has like an elastic, so it doesn't blow off your face. You can tighten it to your ha your head. Um, I'm not sure I would bring this again, but it was fine for sun protection, but it was not very good whenever it was raining or anything. And I kind of have to wear a hat when it's raining, because otherwise my glasses get... Uh, you can't really see out of them, I guess, when it's raining hard. So the hat sort of helps with that, but this one just sort of collapsed on me. But it it, it did uh, did its job, and uh, it's not bad enough to buy a new one, but it's definitely not the perfect hat. I, I took my wallet, of course. Uh, I usually just kept one debit card in here, and then uh, a bit of cash, like 40 euros. And then I kept the majority of my money in here. Um, along with my passport and my health card and ID cards and driver's license. And uh, I also get my credential in here uh, along with my passport. Because every time you come to a hostel, you have to show your pilgrim passport and your regular passport. And then, of course, pay them. So if you keep, keep everything in one Ziploc bag, it's very easy for you to, when you arrive, to just give them that and then... Yeah, check in fast, because there's nothing worse than people fumbling with them, um, with their stuff when when you're in a big line there and stuff. 
my watch it's a Casio classic vibrating alarm clock and it's um, it has alarms that vibrate so it's very good for in hostels where you want to wake up but uh, you don't want to disturb everyone else so it just vibrates on your wrist and, and you usually wake up to it sometimes when you're very tired you you'll just sleep through it but uh, it's pretty good for because many times you're you're already like awake because most people are not very quiet when they leave so you're already like pretty uh, uh, conscious so this just sort of helps give you like the last okay now you have to go up because now it's it's time yeah so this is good and it's bulletproof and it it's lighter than like most metal uh, watches my guidebook i did the michelin guidebook uh, i carried uh, two uh, two different ones one for the french section i did and then when i got to saint john i bought this one for the the french way in spain i did the the pre route in spain and i also had the list here they give you at at uh, saint john and there's also a similar one for the uh, the pre route uh, before that Got to, to show you my shoes here. They are the Solomon X Ultra Free Primes with the laces, and I see them as like the perfect shoe for yeah the type of hiking I did in Spain and France. They're very breathable and very light. That's it. That is my gear. If anyone have any questions, definitely give me a, a question in the comments. And thank you for watching.